We're looking at the Unit 4 review for the Algebra 2 first semester final. So for the number 1, we're going to solve for x. Now this is, these first nine problems are really going to be looking at factoring. Once we factor it down, we set each term equal to 0 using the zero product property and allows us to solve for the uh, equation. So if we look at the first one, x squared minus 4x plus 3. If we go through and factor, I'm looking for a product of 3 and that has to add to negative 4, I get x minus 3, x minus 1. Now that's still equal to 0. So then I set each of them equal to 0, x minus 3 equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0, and I get x equals 3, and x equals 1. So my solution would be x equals 1 and 3. Number two, I need to get everything over to the same side, so I'm going to subtract 11x from both sides. It becomes x squared minus 11x plus 30 equals 0. I'm looking for a product of 30 that adds to negative 11. I could do x minus 6, x minus 5. Then I say x minus 6 equals 0, x minus 5 equals 0, so I get x equals 6 and x equals 5. Number 3, we subtract over, we get 10x squared minus 9x minus 1 equals 0. This is where I have a coefficient on the x squared, so I'm going to look for a product of negative 10 that adds to negative 9. So let's see, if I did uh, negative 10 and positive 1, I could break this apart to be 10x squared minus 10x plus 1, minus 1 equals 0. And remember, I'm breaking up that negative 9x into two terms. This is going to allow me to factor by grouping. I can take a 10x out of the first two terms, leaves me with x minus 1. I can take out a 1 from the other two terms. Am I missing something up? Oh, that should be a 1x right there. Take out an x, or 1, I'm left with x minus 1. So now I take out the x minus 1, common terms in both, and 10x plus 1 is what's left, equals 0. I set each of them equal to 0. If x minus 1 is equal to 0, I get that x is 1. If 10x plus 1 is equal to 0, I get 10x equals negative 1, and x equals negative 1 tenth. So my solution is 1 and negative 1 tenth. Number four, I'm going to start with taking out a common factor. They all have x in common, so that leaves me with x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 0. Now I can factor the uh, trinomial. Since it's product of 4 that adds to 4, I'm going to do x plus 2, x plus 2. I set each of those factors equal to 0. I get x equals 0 x plus 2 equals 0, and well, x plus 2 equals 0 is going to be for both of them, so it's the same. That's going to be x equals negative 2. So my two solutions are 0 and negative 2. Number 5, I'm going to get everything to the same side by subtracting 5x from both sides. x squared minus 5x. Factor out an x. I'm left with x minus 5. So I have x equals 0 x minus 5 equals 0, so x equals 5 for the second one, I get 0 and 5. Number 6, I'm going to factor out what I have in common. I have a 2x in common, leaves me with x squared minus 16 equals 0. x squared minus 16 is a difference of two squares, that becomes x minus 4, x plus 4. So I have 2x equals 0, x minus 4 equals 0, and x plus 4 equals 0. So that gets me a solution of x equals 0, x equals 4, and x equals negative 4. Those are my three solutions then for number 6. Number 7, the factor, we'll get everything to the same side first. x to the fourth minus 10x squared equals 0. I'm going to factor out an x squared. Leaves me with x squared minus 10 equals 0. So I get, I could factor this. That's going to be x minus the square root of 10 
x plus the square root of 10 equals 0. I get x squared equals 0. If I solved for this, I'd get x equals the square root of 10 and x equals negative square root of 10. So those would be my two solutions. And of course that x squared equals 0 is just x equals 0. Number 8. I'm going to get everything to the same side. x plus 7 squared minus 81. And I'm not going to multiply out the x squared or x plus 7 squared. I'm going to first factor down. So let's just treat that x plus 7 as just a term. If it was just a term, I have difference of two squares because it's that term squared minus 9 squared. So that becomes x plus 7 minus 9, x plus 7 plus 9. So now it is x minus 2 and x plus 16. Now by setting each of those equal to 0, I would get my two solutions are 0, or 2, and negative 16. Number 9, we're going to follow the same idea. We're going to treat that x plus 1, let's just treat it as like a blob. You can label it as a variable if you wanted. So that's going to be blob squared plus 3 blob minus 10 equals 0. If I factor that down, it's going to be blob plus 5 blob minus 2. And now we can plug it back in, that x plus 1 plus 5 x plus 1 minus 2, we get x plus 6, and x minus 1, that means my two solutions are going to be negative 6 and positive 1. For our next set of problems, we're looking at graphing the parabolas, and then we need to find the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Number 10 is actually already written in vertex form, so for number 10, we take the negative 5 and positive 4, we take it out of vertex form, and that tells us our vertex is at the point 5, 4. Should be about right here. Okay, and then we look at that coefficient out in front. It's a positive 2. That tells us it's facing up. And since the 2, it'll actually be a little bit steeper, so our parabola will follow that general path. So our vertex is 5, 4. Axis of symmetry is that vertical line through, and that's x equals 5. For number 11, follows the same idea. Um, our vertex, this is still in vertex form. Our vertex is 0, 6, so it's on the y-axis. Our uh, 1 half is our coefficient in front, so it tells us it opens up. But it'll be a little bit flatter this time because it's 1 half. Axis of symmetry goes through there, so it's 0, 6. Axis of symmetry is x equals 0. Number 12. This one we've got to do a little bit of work. We've got to find our first our axis of symmetry, then we can plug that in to find our vertex. So the way we find that is we do negative b over 2a. So that will be negative 6 over 2 times 1 which turns out to be negative 3. So that's our axis of symmetry. Now we plug in negative 3 into our equation and we get y equals 9 minus 18 plus 9. Which turns out to be y equals 0. So our vertex is the point negative 3, 0. Our coefficient's positive, so that means it opens up. So there's our parabola. 13. Same idea here. We're going to do negative b. So be negative 8 over 2 times a, which is just 1. So that comes out to be negative 4. So x equals negative 4. And then we plug that in, negative 4, into our equation, and we get y equals 16 minus 32 plus 2. So that to be, looks like negative 14, 
which is going to be out of our range here, but be down here approximately. So our vertex is negative 4, 14. Last one here is number 14. X equals negative B, so that's negative 16, over 2A, 2 times 4. 16 over 8 equals 2, so our axis of symmetry is at 2. We're now going to substitute that into our equation, and we get 4 times 2 squared, which is 4, minus 16 times 2 is 32, minus 10, 16 minus 32 minus 10, looks like we're going to get a negative 26 here. So that means it's way down here, opening down because it is negative, so our point would be 2, negative 26. For 15, 16, 17, we need to find the vertex and then state whether it's a maximum or minimum. So since this is in vertex form, we can use the negative 8 and 1. Our vertex is 8, negative 1, because we take the opposite of the value from uh, inside the parentheses, so it's x minus 8, so that would be positive 8. And uh, that's our vertex. Now we need to determine if it's a maximum or minimum. Since 3 is our coefficient, that tells us it opens up, so 8 negative 1 will be a minimum. Number 16, our vertex is going to be 2, 0, because we take out the negative 2, change that sign, make it positive. We're not adding anything, so that's just 0. Negative 6 coefficient tells us it goes down, so this will, in this case, will be a maximum. Number 17 is in standard form, so we need to first find our vertex. So x equals negative b over 2a, or negative 8, over 2 times 1. It comes out to be negative 4. We then plug that in, and we get negative 4 squared plus 8 times negative 4 plus 1. 16 minus 32 plus 1. Looks like we get y is negative 15. So in this case, our vertex is negative 4, negative 15. And if we go back and look at that coefficient out in front, that coefficient is positive. That means it opens up. So this will be a minimum. Okay, next we're looking at 18. How does 3 change the graph of y equals x plus 3 squared plus 1 when we started with y equals x squared? So which direction does that 3 move it? Now that 3 is on the inside, so that means it's part of our x value. So if it was our vertex, it would mean if we added 3, we would actually change it negative 3, so we would move it left 3 units. On 19, if I took 4x squared and then made it 4x squared minus 1, that would actually move our vertex down 1 unit because it went from 0, 0 to 0, negative 1. So we would say down 1 unit. Twenty. write the equation of the graph that results of one-half x squared if it's translated to have a vertex of negative 2, negative 3. So let's see. If we write this in vertex form, we're still going to have that one-half. That's going to be x minus something squared plus a value. And that value is hk, that we, or our vertex that we plug in. So I plug in a negative 2 inside the parentheses. It's x minus negative 2. We could just make it plus 2. And then it would be minus 3 on the outside would be our new equation because it's negative 2, negative 3 is our new vertex. 21, what would change if we went from 
x plus 5 squared minus 4 to x minus 2 plus squared plus 4. So I went from 5 to negative 2 here. But we want to be careful. We don't want to mix up as we have vertex form. So let's just mark the vert vertices. If I was at in my first equation, x plus 5 squared minus 4, my vertex would actually be at negative 5. Oops, let's put it in the right spot here. Down here, negative 5, negative 4. And it moved to negative 2, 4, but then we changed the sign, so positive 2, positive 4. So in that case, we move from negative 5 to 2, we move 7 to the right, and we went from negative 4 to 4, and we moved 8 up. So we moved 7 to the right and 8 up. Now for the next set, we need to find the x-intercepts if they exist. Now the x-intercepts are actually just the solutions. They're the solutions of the factors that we looked at, and kind of like what we did on 1 through 9. So we'll start with 22. I'm going to treat it as just solving an equation. So instead of y, I want to see 0 equals x squared plus 7x plus 6. And I'm going to factor it down. So I could factor that to be x plus 1, x plus 6. I solve it, and I get x equals negative 1 and negative 6. So my x-intercepts here would be negative 1, negative 6. We could write them as the point negative 1, 0, negative 6, 0. Go to 23. which is 0 equals 2 times x plus 1 squared minus 8. So I'm going to square x plus 1, and that gives me x squared plus 2x plus 1. I'm now going to distribute the 2, and I get 2x squared plus 4x plus 2 minus 8. Combine my like terms. So I have 2x squared plus 4x minus 6. Take out a common factor, which is 2. x squared plus 2x minus 3. I can now factor. And I get x plus 3, x minus 1. So my two solutions are negative 3 and positive 1, which means my x-intercepts are negative 3, 0 and 1, 0. Now for 24. y equals x squared minus 6x minus 3. So looking to factor here. I don't see any ways I can factor directly with it, so I may have to use a quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So we get 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 plus 12 over 2. 6 plus or minus the square root of 48 over 2. 48 is 16 times 3. So we could take out a 4 root 3 over 2. Divide our terms by 2, and we get 3 plus or minus 2 root 3. So these are actually going to be our solutions. So it's going to be 3 plus or minus 2 root 3, 0. And that's where it hits the x-intercept, or the x-intercepts, or it hits the x-axis. All right, now we need to do 25. 
start 25 over here. And we'll have to erase them for 26 and 27, but we'll start with 25 here. So 0 equals x squared plus 7. Let's think for a second what this graph would actually look like, and maybe that'll help us answer some questions. Because if I looked at intercept form, vertex form for this, it would tell me it's at 0, 7, and it opens up. So this actually doesn't have any x-intercepts because it opens up. So that's actually our reason, no x-intercepts. And what we'd actually find if we tried to solve this was it would not give us a real solution, so it does not really hit the x-axis. It would give us an imaginary solution. So that one's going to be no x-intercepts. All right, well, let's cut some of this out, and we'll go back to 26 now. We'll change colors. So 26, we get 0 equals x squared minus 9x plus 20. We can factor that down to be x minus 4, x minus 5. My two solutions are 4 and 5, so my two x-intercepts would be 4, 0, and 5, 0. 27, we get 0 equals 4x plus 12. So we get 0 equals try it again. Good. Let's see. Well, we're really just solving here, so maybe take out a 4, x plus 3. It becomes 0 equals x plus 3, so x equals negative 3. But if we look at this for a second, that's not really a... Uh, it's not really a parabola, it's actually a line that we'd have. It just means it starts at 12 on the y-intercept, and it has a slope of uh, 4. So it does hit x at uh, negative 3. We could call that the x-intercept, but we should realize there that is not a parabola. So if it's strictly looking for parabola, we're going to say no parabola. But technically it does hit at negative 3. It's not a parabola, so we couldn't say it has x-intercepts like a parabola. So that's maybe kind of a typo we have in the question, but it's something we should be aware of that would help us out. All right, so we're good there. We can go on the next screen. For 29, we're finding the zeros of the functions. Now, zeros are just like the x-intercepts, or just like the solutions. So Similar to what we've already done, we're going to say each equation equal to 0 for y, and we're just going to factor and solve to find our solutions for x. So uh, 4x squared minus 11x minus 3, I'm looking at my factors of negative 12 that add to negative 11, so it looks like I could do a positive 12, negative 1, so 4x squared plus 12x minus x minus 3. I'm going to factor by grouping. Take out a 4x, I'm left with x plus 3. Take out a negative 1, left with x plus 3. Factor out an x plus 3, left with 4x minus 1. I can set each of those equal to 0. x plus 3 equals 0, so I get x is negative 3. 4x minus 1 equals 0. 4x equals 1, so x is 1 fourth. So my, my zeros, or x-intercepts, would be negative 3, 1 fourth. We shouldn't call them x-intercepts. It would be the zeros. It would be where the uh, parabola hits the x-axis. So those would be our zeros. If we wanted to make them into x-intercepts, intercepts, we would just have to put them as a point, where that would be the x value in the point, and the y value would be 0, similar to what we just did on the previous screen. Now, for number 30, we're going to say 0 equals 6x squared minus 11x plus 4. We're looking for the factors of 24 
that add to negative 11. Since it's a positive product but negative sum, means it's probably a negative and a negative I'm using. Uh, so if we look at those two, how about negative 8, negative 3? Seems like a good place to start. So we're going to do 6x squared minus 8x. Got that a little better. Minus 3x plus 4. I can factor out a 2x from my first two terms. Leaves me with a 3x minus 4. I can factor out a negative 1. Leaves me with a 3x minus 4. I then have 3x minus 4 in common. I'm going to take that out. 2x minus 1 is left. I set each of those equal to 0. So 3x equals 4. x equals 4 thirds. And 2x minus 1 equals 0. 2x equals 1. So x equals 1 half. So my two solutions are 4 thirds and 1 half. Last one here is 31. We have 0 equals 3x squared plus 2x minus 16. We're looking for negative 48 is our product, and it has to add to 2. Well, 48 is 6 times 8, so we want negative, so one of them will be negative, but it's a positive sum. So if we did 8 and negative 6, that should work for us. So let's do 3x squared plus 8x minus 6x minus 16. I can factor out an x for the first two terms. That's 3x plus 8. I can factor out a negative. Let's take out a negative 2. And the next two, it leaves me with a 3x plus 8. So they have 3x plus 8 in common. Take that out, I'm left with x plus or x minus 2. So I set them both equal to 0. Uh, for the right one, I get x is 2. And for the one on the left, I get 3x equals negative 8. So x is negative 8 over 3. Okay, for 32, we have a parabola. We need to figure out which is true. So maybe a good thing to start is just list out everything we know, and then we can see what matches. So, uh, vertex form. So I know the vertex is going to be negative 3, positive 4. I know my axis of symmetry is the x value in the vertex, so that's x equals negative 3. My a value out in front tells me it's going to open down because it's negative, and if it opens down, I actually have a maximum. So let's see if that helps us. So minimum is negative 3, 4. Well, we said it was a maximum, so that probably is an issue with the issue with the minimum. Uh, line of symmetry, axis of symmetry, we said it was negative 3, they have positive 3. The parabola is narrower than a parabola whose equation is that. We'll come back to that one. Uh, D, the vertex of the parabola is 3, negative 4. Well, that's the negatives are switched, so that one's out. So we've kind of found holes in A, B, and D. So let's look at C. The only difference that C is from our original one is we have a 1 half. And as the coefficient out in front gets closer to zero, so where we have one in our original and one half in answer C, uh, as it gets smaller, it actually gets wider, and as it gets bigger, it gets narrower or skinnier. And since we have a one in our equation and a one half in the other, that means it is going to be skinnier or it will be more narrow than the negative one half uh, equation. 33, consecutive integer problem. We have two positive numbers are consecutive odd integers. So our first number, we're just going to call x. Our second number, we don't know, but it's 
x plus whatever the next odd number would be. We have to be careful here. If they said consecutive integers, I would do x plus 1, because it would be x and then the next one, or, or one more. But since it's odd, the next odd number is actually two more. Think of 5, 7, 9, 11. It increases by 2. So that's our two values we're going to work with. The square of the smaller is 4 more than 9 times the larger. So the square of the smaller is 4 more than 9 times the larger. So if we think about it, let's try something like that. Let's see if that helps us. So the square of the smaller, x squared, is 4 more than 9 times the larger. We got the parts in the right place, but we have a slight issue with that because right here we're saying that we have to add 4 to x squared to make it equal. But that's not really what we have. We have that this other part isn't enough to be equal. So we should move that plus 4 to this side because now we're saying that the square of the smaller is 4 more than 9 times that x plus 1. So we're going to stick with that setup. Now we can solve. So I have x squared equals 9x plus 9 plus 4. But this looks a lot like a uh, quadratic. I could write, let's move, we're going to move all the other terms over. But let's actually put them together first. 9x plus 13. If I subtract those both over to the left side, I get x squared minus 9x minus 13. But as we look at this, we can't really factor that. And we have an error. Where did we make that mistake? Well, we didn't copy the problem down correctly. We actually should have put a 2 right there instead. So hopefully you caught that, and I'm just the one that made the mistake. So that makes this 18 plus 4, which now we get 22. And now down here, it's negative 22. Because it really wouldn't make sense for it not to factor and not to get whole numbers here. Because we're not looking for fractions or imaginary numbers or complex numbers. We, it, they should work. It should factor down. So that should be something that would uh, come to our attention. So now I can factor this. Product of negative 22 adds to negative 9. How about we go x minus 11, x plus 2 equals 0. So that means our two solutions are 11 and negative 2. Now... Which one works? We had a key word in the beginning that said positive. So we need the positive numbers. Well, that means negative 2 is out because it's oh, negative. So our first number is 11. Our next number would be 13 because it's the next odd number or it's 2 more than 11.